All right, so I'm gonna go over how I created these bricks for the siege level and how I create most of my bricks for just Ashes of Creation in general. Um, all the kind of steps that you see in this graph can can be seen in a bunch of the other graphs I've created for the game and a bunch of other textures. I kind of end up using the same kind of methods for a lot of my stuff. Um, so right at the get-go, um, I create just a basic shape and I plug it into a tile sampler. What this tile sampler does, it essentially tiles uh, the shape that you plugged it in into your pattern input, and it gives you a bunch of different um, parameters to mess with and play with. So I got something that was kind of random, you know, some shapes or some bricks are bigger than the others, and um, uh, I put the Y amount higher than the X because that gives me like more different uh, rows of uh, bricks that I want. And finally, the thing I always do with uh, bricks is I bump up the uh, color random, which gives you these kind of different values in the um, in the bricks. That's why you get some kind of uh, bricks insetting more than others. Um, from there, I do an edge detect. And what this edge detect does is it will take whatever you plug into it. Um, it will take whatever you plug into it and try to find the edges based on like the different uh, values so this white to this darker gray um, you know the whole thing is just it's it's searching for pretty much edges to create and you could change the width of these you could change the roundness of them if you want um, it's just everything is pretty much up to you to play with uh, from there what I like to do is this is going to be really flat and has no sort of values or anything with the height map. Uh, from you, I plug it into a flood fill, and what a flood fill is, it gives you a bunch of crazy like slopes and gradients to play with. But the thing about this is it has to be a black and white mass no matter what. If I tried plugging in um, just this kind of this mass right here, it essentially breaks it. What what it needs isn't what it needs is a, a tiling black and white mask to uh, to get the shapes from. Uh, from here, I just uh, use a flood fill to gradient node, and that creates this weird and it changes this weird like colorful gradient into actual black and white values that we can use. And if I were to just um, bring in a new one, uh, it actually doesn't. It actually, the angles of the bricks are actually all going the same way, so I kind of just change the angle variation so I get a bunch of different uh, angles to play with. Um, and I do that three or four times, depending on what I want, and I, ju and I just kind of start blending them with a min darken on top of one another. So what's happening is you're getting this kind of gradient, blending it with this kind of gradient, and then you're starting to get these kinds of shapes, almost like sculpted shapes like chipped off broken bricks and again you bring it in here and you start getting these like planes almost so it almost looks like they were hand sculpted so once we have something like this i go back to my original edge detect and then i blend it over so now we have this kind of shape blended over our original black and white mask from here um from here, I, I bring in another flood fill, and then this time I, drain, I bring in a flood fill to random grayscale. And what this does is, it's kind of doing what this is doing, but instead of gradients, it's just giving me random uh, black and white values. And this is essentially bringing back the values that we lost from here because we did the edge detect. So we're bringing these back and kind of just blending them over. So now we have different values inside the bricks and then they're inset and offset it. Um, so before, after. Um, so right here, I noticed the, um, the bricks are super sharp and not really lifelike, I guess. Um, so I bring in a random uh, blur grayscale to kind of blur it up a bit. So it's not too perfect and not too straight, the 90 degree angles and stuff like that. From here, I do just a slope blur grayscale, and I plug it in with a Perlin noise. And you, this can be any type of noise that you want uh, from the large list that you have on Substance. And what this is doing is it's basically chipping more of these edges away. You can play with the intensity if you like, and you can get like you know, 
some bigger shapes or just smaller shapes, whatever you want to do. Um, next, I start bringing in these crystals. And uh, what these crystals are doing for me are just breaking it up the bricks even more. Um, I don't like how perfect these, just right off the bat, the crystal node is. So I bring a directional warp and I plug in, uh, a ra again, another random noise into the intensity output. Input, uh, sorry. And then I blend that over again. So now we're starting to get this kind of stuff all around the bricks where it looks like stuff was broken and stuff like that. Um, I level that just to get a, a, a little bit more contrast with the bricks. So we get some that are kind of uh, flat at the very ends and then we have some other like um, just different like kind of gradients everywhere and just have a different like kind of silhouette to the bricks when you're looking at them from different angles. Um, so here I, I did ex essentially this exact same thing I did originally with the big kind of uh, like chipping of the bricks, but instead I'm kind of going with a more um, tighter kind of noise. And so it's giving me even finer details ra rather than these like kind of bigger, broader shapes. And again, I'm just kind of blending it in. So we go from something like this and we bring in these kind of smaller chipping and blending into here. Um, from here, I do another slope blur, actually. I'm not even sure if this is really doing anything. Sometimes I use this, sometimes I don't. But what it's doing, it's super subtle. You might not even be able to see it. But what it's doing is it's kind of tightening the edges a little bit. So because I blurred, um, I blurred the bricks back here a little bit, um, I kind of wanted to bring the hardness back, so I kind of just use a slope blur um, into each other. And it's like at a point one, so you get to play with whatever you think looks good. So here we start getting into adding noises, and the noises are really up to you. The, the different grunge maps there are in substance, you can just choose whatever you want. Um, I like to keep it as is and then just blur it a little bit because it's just too sharp and too noisy. Um, what's happening here is instead of layering this grunge over the entire bricks, um, you, you'll definitely notice how it starts repeating and then it just doesn't look good. What you want to do is break up each different, uh, you want to break up this noise so that it breaks up dependent on each different brick. And to do that, it's um, I use the same flood fill that I used to um, to bring the kind of random grayscales, but instead I'm using a flood fill to random color because uh, the way this vector warp uh, works is that it, ha it has to have a color input. So that's why um, I'm doing a color. And wh what essentially is it's doing is that because each one of these is a different color, it's moving the mask around and doing a different shape, a different kind of grunge based on uh, different bricks. And from here, it's a little too like contrasty, too strong. So I know it'll like go nuts once I apply it. So I kind of just level it a little bit, and I subtly bring it in. Um, from here, exact same thing that I just showed you with this, but it's just a completely different grunge mask. And then uh, I, again, I just blend it in. Um, what I did here though was with the different noises. I wanted two different noises, but I wanted them to be almost like in separate areas of the bricks. So with this kind of, with the first noise applied, I took a levels and I brought it, you know, I brought the blacks and whites super high. And then you start getting this mass. So essentially what's gonna happen is only the white areas are gonna include the second uh, noise because you're gonna plug this into the blend. And I just blur it, level it, and now what you're seeing is uh, this kind of mask is telling this second noise where to be applied. So if I were to take this off, it kind of, you can't see it right now, but it's, it's kind of going everywhere and not in like certain areas. I just wanted a little bit more kind of, you can probably see it right here a little bit. So it's super subtle, but it makes a big difference. Uh, from here, um, 
again, I keep going back and forth between how soft I want these um, bricks and how sharp I want them. <coughs> so I bring in a blur HQ and then I blend that over my original so I can control how much blur I want. So it's like at a 0.15 right now, so nothing too crazy. Uh, from here, I just do uh, a bevel node. And what this is doing is just giving me some soft bevels. I level it and I bring those in so I'll be able to get kind of these softer bevels on certain um, bricks. So you go from this to this. Um, here, again, I noticed that I lost a lot of the kind of the um, these kind of values from the original, these kind of uh, grays and whites that tell like how far to push and pull the bricks. So I basically just went all the way to the beginning, grabbed it again, and just uh, multiplied it back. So we have these values back in. Here, um, here I'm actually adding the cracks into the, um, into the bricks. And the cracks are kind of their own separate graph on its own. I, I start with the tile sampler that I showed you up, uh, in the beginning. But instead of plugging anything in, I just leave it to a, a random uh, pattern that they provide. So I just put a disk. And with playing around with all these parameters, I get a kind of a mass that's just just speckles of white and like different values of gray, super tiny. Uh, not a lot going on there. And I plug it into a distance node. What the distance node is going to do is it's going to find these kind of different values and different specs and it's going to kind of blow them out into like a kind of geometric pattern. Um, and you also have to have a mask input so you essentially take what the original mask that you had, you level it to com be completely white and plug that in as well. Put the max distance to as high as it can go. Uh, from here, you do an edge detect, kind of like what I had shown back here. Um, do a directional warp, just to break it up a bit. Uh, do a slope blur, kind of what I did with the bricks to bring in some chipping. Um, I do another slope blur with a different noise to bring in some more different kinds of chipping. And I take my original um, cracks, I uh, break them up even more so and I just kind of scale them down I blend them into the original so now we have like these big and small cracks um, and then I because the, the contrast of these are so high I just histogram it to bring the values kind of down a bit I vector warp kind of what I showed you with the noises to break up per brick um, let's see so you can bevel it if you want I had like, I don't even know if you can see it, but I had like a little bit of bevel in there and just blend it over. And here I'm just blending it in and you can it, you can kind of see it in here a little bit. Everything is super subtle just because, um, you know, less is more. You don't want to over exaggerate any of these shapes and they'll start looking uh, not as good. Um, let's see from here. Oh, and this switch is basically a switch to turn on and off the cracks if I want. So it's either you have it on or you have it off. And all this button does is do that. It's kind of if you want to parameterize the um, material. So let's see. Another thing that, let me see if you can see it. Oh, let's see. Actually, this probably doesn't need to be here. Let's see if it'll do anything. Cool. All right. So from here, this is what kind of what we have right now. Um, let's see what's going on here. Plaster. Ah, yes. Uh, so I made a I made like kind of just a random plaster that can be height blended into the bricks. Uh, this was before I kind of um, introduced the moss, but you can see what will happen um, if I just kind of start bringing this up. You know, some of the plaster will kind of start seeping through. That's how you guys kind of get this look. Um, 
this is off by default on these bricks. But to make the plaster, it's just a bunch of different noises, um, transforms, you know, change the shape of them, blend them, level them, and just kind of put different noises together um, with the slope blur grayscale, kind of like what I showed with the bricks and the cracks. It's just a way to like get these chipping on some of the larger shapes. Again, kind of just blurring it, blending in between more and more different kind of noises, more noises. It's just a bunch of layering of different noises that get kind of the look and feel I want. <coughs> and this node is pretty much what, uh, this essentially does blending for you. Um, it's called a height blend and you basically just plug in what your bottom layer is and what your top layer is. And it gives you contrast, opacity, and high offset to play with. And that's all you really need to do if you ever wanted to blend two different materials together. So we got like a sandstone with some moss going in there. Um, this is exact. Th this kind of high blend is exactly what's um, uh, blending in the uh, the moss here. With the moss, uh, I started out with the shape. I brought in a trapezoid transform to kind of make it into a teardrop looking shape. Um, it was looking too flat, so what I did was I brought in a gradient that has a slope from black to white to black, and it's gonna almost, and I blended it, which gives you like kind of this super subtle, but you'll be able to see it where the, this kind of top is um, actually, because I'm subtracting it, it's actually going in, and then these two are flaring out. And then just like I did here with a uh, gradient, I did another gradient, but just a linear to go from uh, a dark to a peak white, blurred it a little bit, warped it with some noise, did another, I did two different variations of warps, and then I plugged it into a splatter circular. What a splatter circular does is essentially you can plug in any shape and it gives you a bunch of parameters to kind of um, move the shape into a circular motion or whatever you'd like. Um, from here, uh, I, I plugged into a tile sampler, kind of how I uh, explained it in the bricks. So you have a bunch of these small shapes being multiplied and then different shapes, different rotations, all based on like all the parameters in here. From there, I blended it over just some random subtle noises, nothing crazy. Um, these are just noises that come in with substance. And then here is where my height blend happens. So, but um, I only wanted I kind of only wanted the moss to grow in certain areas. So that's what this mask is doing right here. Um, what is going on is I'm taking the bricks before anything is added <coughs> and I'm histogram scanning it to get some like, kind of like a more contrasty mask and then I'm inverting that. So it's, you'll see white is what's gonna be um, uh, present and then I chipped that a bit because now this kind of white area is going to start seeping onto the bricks. Um, and then I did a non-uniform blend. So what's ha what this mask is telling me right now is that anywhere there's white, it's in between the bricks is going to grow moss. So that's exactly what is happening here. I just plug it into the mask. This is optional. You can let the you can let just the hide offset node do all the all the different um, height blend for you, but. I feel like this gives you a little bit more control on where you actually want it to show up. And again, you know, I could bring down the height offset and now I don't have as much, I have like no moss or, you know, play with your different parameters. <clears throat> so how I do my color maps, um, I always use the exact same three nodes. I do um, because if you were just to plug in this, without any kind of noises into a gradient, you you wouldn't get as much kind of uh, fidelity in your different kind of noises, or sorry, in your albedo maps. You wouldn't get as much different like uh, sporadic colors to choose from. So I always do a get slope um, and you could get, and you can mess with the parameters, high clip degrees, low clip degrees fall off. I do a high pass and I do an ambient. I blend the high pass and the ambient via add sub and just mess with the opacities and then bring in the get slope with a max line so you can see you'll get some highlights here from here 
I can literally go on CG textures and just pick a few colors. I do that three or four times and I blend them between each other based on like different masks. So here is that black, that kind of random gray scale mass and I just use it as a mask to kind of randomly assign colors. Here, just a basic uniform color with a grunge and I'm doing that whole like breaking it up by brick. Uh, again, same thing, but instead I'm using a dirt generator. And what this dirt generator does is all it needs is um, all it needs is your ambient occlusion, your curvature, and uh, your normal. Um, oh, what the fuck? <clears throat> to uh, create a different to create a mask that your um, that dirt accumulates and you can actually play with the dirt level the dirt contrast so if I, I can bring this down and you see like I'm not getting as much of this like, kind of white dirt as before bring that all the way down so we start getting like some different all it is is just a mass generator so you can play around with it and I plug that into another color so this is kind of the color that's given me you can play with whatever you want and you'll see that it's like giving you different stuff um, HSL super subtle 0.5 to like bring up the colors a little bit based on my liking um, one last final grunge over the whole thing um, and here is actually what's going on here is I'm blending in the color but only for the um, the dirt that I originally talked about so just how I did these kinds of uh, noises and color gradients and all kind of this it's the exact same thing except instead of plugging in this final brick I'm plugging in just from the uh, you would call this just your plaster same thing here this is just your moss uh, so you can see there's two different graphs and it's just blending in again but you're using opacity mask and the opacity mask is uh, you get it from your height mask when you ever blend any two things, it's going to get you a mask and it's going to tell you where the stuff's blending in. So, so far that's what you have now. And that's it. You plug it into your color. Um, and that's your final kind of albedo that you have. Uh, as far as your roughness, I created a tool <coughs> back when I first started called the Intrepid Roughness. and. It tells you right here, all you need is to plug in your normal, your color, your AO, and it gives you a bunch of different um, parameters to play with uh, for each kind of map that you're inputting. So it gives you different uh, values and stuff. So I can like, you know, it's super subtle, but you can like get stuff looking a certain way. That'll probably make it look almost like a wetter feel. And, you know, <clears throat> you can get like contrast here. You can get like bolder shapes, whatever you want. <coughs> and um, to get even more control, I just kind of level it if I'm not getting what I want with the kind of controls I provided. Uh, plug that into the roughness. Because this is a non-metallic surface, the whole metallic map is a pure black. Um, and ambient occlusion, you know, just get an ambient occlusion node, plug it into the ambient and your height and height. And that's pretty much it.